Ciao. God, don't do it. Introducing. Don't do it. Dinner party. She did the hands. And today, I'm going to use dinner party to invite you all to squeeze in with your hand on your trackpad. You end yeah. Up with this. Yeah. 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 No, I don't use that. You're right. You know, find it by that. accident. That's true. That's true. And then you're like, oh, wow, I forgot I even downloaded that app. <laughs> Delete. All right. Richard Gunther, everybody, he spent the week with us, which was very kind of him. Oh, but he's not done yet. He's not done yet. No. Is there anything you want to remind people about before we get into uh, before we get into the uh, the meat, potatoes, whatever side you want, and uh, dessert of today's show? Yeah, I'm going to promote a show that I haven't done in a while. How crazy is that? So one of my favorite shows that I've worked on over the years is a show called Home On. Mm-hmm. And it is also a show about smart home technology, but specifically about products and DIY stuff. So if you're interested in learning about different products that are out there and learning about those oftentimes from the manufacturers themselves, we've had CEOs from major companies on that come on and talk about their stuff, like uh, folks from Ring and other uh, other manufacturers. It is a lot of fun and very informative, but I have been so swamped with life this last six months that I have not been able to get shows out, but it has not gone away. It will come back. Cool. That's a weird, you know, maybe we should talk off mic about that. I I didn't mean to take two weeks off from this show. I just did. And then you actually got in touch with me. Like, so, you know, what are you doing another one? And I'm like, well, what do you want to be on? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then uh, well, somebody you else go. sometimes you just need a push there you go and somebody actually uh, wrote to me this weekend as well well last weekend now as people hear this and said uh, so are you done with that show i'm like no i'm not done with it it's coming back monday with richard gunther everybody at richard gunther on twitter at richard gunther so this is i can't remember the third or fourth in our party i believe this is the fourth uh, long time listeners to this show know i started off doing five topics a week and and that just you know nearly killed my spirit and so then I said, well, let's let's make somebody else come up with a topic for Monday, and that'll be news to them. And then uh, four topics a week, eh, it still seems like a bit much. So I replaced it with the album side, but then I was having people back on. You can't make them do another album side. So introduce Wheel of Stuff, which is a tremendous amount of fun. It will be back at some point. Uh, but, you know, I thought, it, it's been like six, seven months now. I would like to try something else uh, for Friday. And uh, inspired by Mythic Quest, Raven's Banquet, and, and Poppy's, uh, uh, Poppy, I can't remember her last name, can't remember the character's last name, but Poppy's introduction to the Mythic Quest mythos, uh, dinner party. I remember that whole thing of like, you know, people come and uh, you know, people say, hey, who are the three people that you would like to have dinner with? Or who are the three people that you would like to, you know, have lunch with? Or other meals, And so I figured that would be a fun way to find out more about the people and also uh, generate interesting conversation. And then uh, the third dinner party uh, wrecked it because Allison Sheridan had the best answer. And like, I've had a lot of people go like, I don't want to do a dinner party because Allison Sheridan. So let's just assume that Allison Sheridan's great, great granddaughter is going to be at the dinner party. Because you know, <laughs> for everybody, it. for everybody, right? For everybody. And then she can share notes with Allison when they finally get around to having dinner. Um, I, but I, I, I put the question to Mr. Gunter and, uh, I'm curious, uh, you get three people, it's like a seven course meal or whatever. So you got, you know, a few hours, this is not the rest of your life. You're hanging out with these people. It's not a Sartre play for crying out loud, but it's also not a, you know, grabbing a cup of coffee and leaving. Uh, who's the first person, uh, the first person rather that gets an invitation. So I've gone in, I've selected people who are not terribly original, but they are leaders who in or before my lifetime have inspired me with their work. Hmm. And I don't necessarily know what I would be conversing with these folks about, but, you know, it'd be fun to think about it. So the first one, and I mentioned this person in passing as we were talking a little bit about some architecture from the sets of Blade Runner, I think, off, off mic. mic. Yeah, I believe but, so. But uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright hmm. is someone that I have spent an, an enormous time in my life studying. I am not an architect. I, as a kid, wanted 
to be an architect, but at some point in time veered from that and went more into computer stuff because I found computers fascinating, Mm -hmm. but continued to be significantly interested in Frank Lloyd Wright's works. I have traveled to locations to see places that he's built or designed. I have toured many of the places that he has built. I have watched many of the places that he has built uh, need to be rebuilt because they don't last the tests of time, unfortunately. And that might be an interesting discussion to have with him at dinner. Like, uh, you know, you chose this as opposed to that. Is there a reason? And are you aware of the effects that that had on the property over time? Hmm. So, you know, it's not that I would want to necessarily confront him, but I I (laughs) maybe... Maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Did you know that falling water was falling down at one point, actually? <laughs> what I are your thoughts not, on that? I did not know. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were asking me. You're asking him. <laughs> Let me ask you a question really quickly. Two questions, depending on your first answer. Um, sure. Are you familiar with Frederick Law Olmsted? I am not. Frederick Law Olmsted is a, a um, an environmental, well, I don't even know what you call him that, an environmental artist. He designed Central Park. Oh, wow. He designed um, the Boston Common, I want to say, or maybe it was the Emerald Necklace, which, of course, is that whole series of parks that doesn't really work anymore. Back in the day, it was called the Emerald Necklace because you could walk all the way around Boston just in green, just in parks. Okay. And then uh, Sears bought it off the, uh, bought uh, with this one part of it off the city in the 1950s and turned it into a building that closed like 10 years later. It wasn't even, a, I think it was like a Sears office building or something. And, you know, wrecked the park and every now and then they're like, yeah, it would cost $90 billion to fix it. And so we're not going to, or, you know, however much. He uh, did some work on the uh, West Coast as well. Um, but your answer was no, so never mind. <laughs> that sort of negates the second question. Um He actually designed a a string of parks around uh, Buffalo as well, which was always a fascinating thing when I lived there because I was a huge fan of his, did not even know that he had had any work there. I guess it was probably around the the Pan American Exposition in the uh, 1901. He might have done some work around it before that, but you see a lot of like radial paths for streets and things. And and of course, there's some uh, there's some uh, Frank Lloyd Wright stuff there as well. So that was that was going to be my question, and said I answered it for you. You're welcome. <laughs> who's, All right, who, there you go. Who's your uh, Who's your second guest? So second guest, this is another one that may be a little trite when you hear it, but uh, another person whose work has certainly influenced me over my lifetime, Walt Disney. Hmm. Walt Disney is someone who is uh, you know kind of has the the vision and the um, the ability to execute on that vision in a way that few have, I think similar to the way many people see Steve Jobs. Mm. And Walt, for whatever reason, chose to spend that brilliance toward creating things that would delight his children, mm-hmm. which just fascinates me and ultimately ended up appealing to children and adults around the world, creating a, a legacy and a, 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 a huge conglomerate of entertainment companies now that are enormously successful and, and continue to grow. So I'm curious, would you talk to him about history or would you uh, ask him how he feels about Disney owning Marvel? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, what I would want to talk with him about is more uh, about his vision of what Disney World and Disneyland were going to become. You know, he he had plans for Epcot before he died. He never got to see Epcot build. Um, he never got to see a- any of the expansions in California, even though uh, he had ideas, though not really formalized those. I think it would be fascinating to get his thoughts on 
what those parks were going to be and how they were going to grow over time. Yeah, Epcot breaks my heart. And I know there are wonderful things about Epcot, and there are certainly parts of it that I enjoy, but the fact that it was going to be a, you know, I think people know, experimental prototype city of tomorrow. Community of tomorrow. Community of tomorrow. Okay, yeah. The, the, you know, the idea that somebody had that vision, and then somebody else said, or rides. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a bummer. And, but. and even then they were educational, and now it's just, let's promote the heck out of our yeah. characters. Yeah, I miss the old, uh, the old. Uh, I mean, it was still a scary ride, but the one for Norway, which I understand oh, yeah. is now uh, all turned over to Frozen. Which oh, it's I awful. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> the Living Seas, actually, once they introduced Nemo, it's like, okay, well, I like Nemo, yep. I like the Living Seas. Don't like them together. The hydrolators were better. Those were the elevator, the fake elevators that took you down under the water. To oh. the, those were much better than Nemo. Let me oh, tell you. Well. Oh well. Oh well. But you know, it's fine. Who's your third guest? <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. It's great. Everybody always says things were better. There are probably people who are like, yeah, I remember when all this was swamp. <laughs> that, is, that, that was the day. They say so, you know, it's kind of hard to complain about. It's a new place to see Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy. And who doesn't like that galaxy being guarded? Yeah. Or something. I don't know. Who's your third guest? Please stop me. <laughs> uh, my third guest, I'm going to bend your rules a little bit. I think I usually do that on the third question. This is someone who's still alive. Okay. But I want to talk to him in the mid 1970s. Okay. Really quickly, I there are no rules. You, you need to invite three people. That's it. I mean, they can okay. be living, dead. They can, you know, speak English normally They or whatever language. Do they you... have to be real? I mean, could I invite Zeph from Cochran? No. <laughs> okay. They do need to be actual people. Okay. All I would right. Say. Well, but anyway, okay. So, so number three, you want to talk to them in the mid 1970s? Yeah. Similar vein uh, as the joke I just made. I, I would love to talk to Gene Krantz in the mid seventies. Interesting. I'm a huge, huge space buff. I remember watching the moon landing when I was a kid, the first moon landing, my mom sat me down in front of the television for me to watch it. Mm. Um, I watched the first shuttle launch. I still watch launches regularly. I've been to the Cape several times to see launches. I, I, it is it's, I think space exploration and um, science in space is very important for us as a society. And I would love to have gotten Gene's perspective. Gene Kranz was the flight director for Apollo 11, Apollo 13. He was one of the managers of that group at the time always at least for the video that we're allowed to see always very level-headed um you know really good manager type from um uh, from what we know of him and i think it'd be fascinating to get his perspective on what space exploration would be like today from where the program was in the early 70s well I will leave you gentlemen to your conversation. Uh, the, uh, the waiter will be out in a moment to take your orders. And uh, Mr. Gunther, I thank you very much for spending the week with us. Thank you, sir. It's been fun as always. 